Hello, and thank you so much for inviting me to this very exciting event in a very exciting city. I am a curator of art, and I've been invited to navigate the uncharted waters of a garden right here in the heart of the city. The Neon Foundation has asked if I would put together an open-air exhibition in the National Garden of Athens. It's a labyrinth of forking paths, dark thickets of trees, and sunken fountains. It's a time capsule from the 19th century, a vestige of monarchy, steeped in Bavarian romanticism and populated with plants brought from around the world. It's a kind of arboreal colony. It's beautiful, but even my guidebook tells me there's an air of benign neglect. Could this sleeping beauty be woken up? Could a historic garden be a platform for contemporary art? What do you think? And at a time of scarcity, can we justify devoting resources to public art? Public art, what's it for? Well, the first answer is, of course, time travel. Public art takes us on a journey into the past, the present, and the future. This cast of an entire house by Rachel Whiteread is like a concrete photograph, the ghost of a home demolished to make way for new developments. Here, a group of people stand in a forest in Kassel, Germany. They're captivated by sound, the sounds of World War II Allied bombers who dropped their shells here in 1942, blasts and echoes recreated by Janet Cardiff in 2012. And here, in an empty building site right in the middle of London, Daniel Silver created an underworld of archaeological fragments that synthesize all lost civilizations. He makes them into metaphors for the unconscious. Public art is also about the here and now. Georg Harold invited viewers to treat the garden as a spatial poem, translating the sensations of color, fragrance, and texture into language. Placing sound speakers in the drains of Athens, Kostas Ioannidis invites us to sit down, forget the traffic, and listen to the sound of the ocean, which rose up from the gutters. And of course, we must look forward, and public art takes us into the future. Nikos Navridis transformed this abandoned olive oil factory into a living field of wheat, a metaphor for potential growth, potential nourishment. Or, as the taxi driver who took me there described it, a metaphor for a path for life. Public art is about participation. The work of art today embraces its audiences and recognizes each of us as part of an innate and cultural collectivity. But it also recognizes that we bring unique and individual sensibilities that play their part in meaning and in making. Louise Bourgeois's Maman stimulates both wonder and dread. Los Carpinteros' Guiro stimulates invention. These artists from Cuba created this beautiful pod as a place where budding poets, musicians, writers can put their books, its shelves, all their beers, and hang out together to create and perform new compositions. 
this beautiful good was luminous. It radiated light. And so we can see how public art is also a form of communication. It's a public platform. It's something that embraces us. This is in the Sharjah Biennale, Ernesto Neto, an artist from Brazil coming to the Middle East and creating a space for practitioners, the public, to meet. So, public art is a form of communication. Juan Muñoz inserts these other beings into our social space to create a parallel world whose language we can only speculate about. It's a talking point about silent communication. Public art is also a form of media. In London's Trafalgar Square, surrounding Nelson's column, there are four plinths. Three of them have 19th century military figures, statues, that have been there for a hundred years and where the pigeons like to sit. But the fourth plinth has always been empty. The mayor of London decided that this was the perfect opportunity to give contemporary artists a temporary platform right in the heart of the city. Mark Wallinger, Rachel Whiteread, Yinka Shanabara, Anthony Gormley, no work. For his fourth plinth project, he gave over this space to the public. Over 100 days, 2,400 people selected from hundreds of thousands of applicants each spent one hour on the plinth, 24 hours a day. Some shed their clothes, while others sang, danced, looked for jobs, or railed against issues such as global warming. Nine people chose nudity for their one hour. Thousands came to the square. But also, this project was sponsored and televised by Sky Arts, so that each participant was witnessed online by millions. These public art projects are not just about giving expression to one individual's vision. They're also about communicating the values of a civil society. They communicate openness to critical reflection. They communicate new ways of seeing and thinking. They communicate a commitment to imagination and creativity a commitment to the art of our time. They communicate confidence in the future. They can confirm a city as a world-class city whose reputation rests not just on the past, but on the art of the present and the cultural legacy of the future. Public art creates cultural ecologies. We've seen through large-scale temporary art events, biennales, outdoor exhibitions, public art commissions, a thirst for the sensory experience and intellectual journey that works of art offer. I don't know if any of you went last year to Kassel in Germany to see Documenta 13, possibly the biggest exhibition of contemporary art in the world. It attracted 860,000 visitors in 100 days. And Kassel was twinned with Kabul in Afghanistan, where it attracted 27,000 people. Local school children, students, academics, craftsmen, all got involved. Local businesses, from hotels and bars to fabrication workshops and editing suites, all profited. One of the artists in Documenta 13 was Thomas Schutter. Artists are good at transcending geopolitical or social barriers. Young artists like to move around, have conversations. They absorb knowledge like magpies. They can pick up threads from science, philosophy, and history and weave them together to reveal unexpected patterns and possibilities. Here's a piece that this artist, also in documented, Giuseppe Panini, made for the Whitechapel Gallery. And over a year, it was seen by 300,000 people. And now, here it is in the Palace of Versailles in Paris. Artists are looking for creative energy and for opportunities. 
To have meaningful, sustainable development, we need ideas. Artists provide the creative spark that leads to innovation. Public art gives the known and the everyday the excitement, the unpredictability, and the potential of uncharted waters. Thank you.